Hi, my name is Josephine and these are my creatures. Hello! First of all, I need to say how terribly sorry I am for not posting for the last three months. But sometimes there is not enough time to do absolutely everything that you would like, need or want to do. So, today's video is a very special one for the reason that I was invited to do yet another collab with my internet doll friends. The Dolly Geek, Doll Maker, Stefu Doll, Pixie Notori, I Could Do That, DIY, Harley's Dollhouse and Blurred Colors Art. I will have these lovely humans linked down below in case you would like to give their videos a look. The theme of the collab is Fruity Girls, and each of us needed to pick a fruit to inspire their doll design. One of my favorite fruits is kiwi, and they are very cute looking, so I decided to use the kiwi fruit as my inspiration. Not to be mistaken for the kiwi bird or the people of New Zealand who are also referred to as kiwis. I purchased these specific dolls for an upcoming project, and I had plans to make a hybrid of them. The only problem with hybrids is what to do with the leftover parts, so I decided to use them up in this custom. After separating both of the dolls' heads, I proceeded the process with the Cave Club doll's body and Briar Beauty's head. Briar gets the old pliers in the head treatment to loosen up those extra gnarly looking glue chunks and stubble of hair. Ever After Huddles are kind of difficult to find second hand in my opinion, so it's my first time working with one. And the amount of sticky glue in her head was just pure gross. Ugh. A little bit of acetone will take care of the factory face and the leftover glue mess. I always use 100% acetone to make the job go smoothly. The next problem we need to solve is the neck peg. Cave Club dolls have very small necks, so the larger Ever After High Head just flops around. And the Cave Club doll head has no chance whatsoever of fitting onto Briar's neck peg. Because in the end I want these dolls to completely swap heads, I decided to cut off each doll's neck so that I can transplant it with the head to the new body. You gotta love the weird sentences in doll customizing. To attach the new head to the body, I will use super glue and a tiny piece of strong metal wire. The attachment point is a little bit messy, so I clean it up with some magic sculpt clay. How it works is you mix equal parts, hardener and resin, and it will cure in 12 to 24 hours. The working time is around 2 to 3 hours, depending on how hot or cold it is. If it's super hot, it will cure faster. Basically, it's the same stuff as Epoxy Sculpt, it's just a different brand name and packaging. I sand the modifications and the rest of the body to prep it for the next step, color changing. For some reason, I decided to use acrylic paint for this. I don't usually and now I remember why. Because it sucks and here's why. I spent a long time color matching my paint and I got pretty close if I don't say so myself. But the acrylic paint needs a varnish on top to protect it from chipping and scratching off. I have used my Tamiya Gloss Glaze on top of acrylic paint before, but it was a different brand of acrylics and not matte as this paint is from Folk Art. So the second I brushed it on, it turned Oompa Loompa orange. Great. Just great. Well, at that point I thought it might change back if I spray it with MSC, because that's matte. 
Well, it helped a bit, <laughs> but in the end, I needed to correct the color with pastels and a couple layers of MSC. So at that point, I might as well have done the color change with pastels from the beginning. And guess what? The paint still rubbed off from certain places despite the heavy varnish. So note to myself, keep looking for a better varnish. Until then, stay away from acrylic paint. Because I had the MSC and pastels already out, it was convenient to start the face-up process as well. The balloon head of Ever After High Dolls works in my favor this time because it looks like the kiwi already. Besides having the kiwi as my inspiration, the outfit was inspired by Japanese street styles. Think of Harajuku and brightly colored outfits. And I looked a lot of corresponding makeup looks, but I was not quite able to do what I would have liked with her face. She did turn out cute and I like her, but I was going for that puffy under eye look and I didn't get it to look as 3D as I would have liked. I think I should have placed the eyes higher to get the more puffier look. In the first layer, I was able to do a lot. Add color to the skin with blush, sketch and start coloring and detailing the eyes, I think the eyebrows are the thing in her face that turned out the best. I really liked the different shape I was able to achieve. I did steal her face at some point for the second time, but I forgot to film that. The second layer is really about adding to the first one. Deepening things here and there, like the eyebrows, adding more highlights to her nose and lips, and building up the color on her cheeks and lips. Then it was time for lashes. Having the lashes extend the whole length of the eye really opens up her eyes, but maybe looking back at it now, I should have reined it in a little bit and only done a few at the outer corner, but she looks cute this way as well, so I'm not mad at it. I really wanted to up the cute factor in her face, so I gave her some freckles with light brown pencil. A cute smile will surely make her look super cute, so I painted on her teeth with white paint. I could not breathe while doing her teeth. It's such a small detail and in a difficult spot, but I managed in the end. I pulled the left corner of her mouth up slightly to get an even more cuter look. Before I seal her for the third time, I add some Perlex powders to her eyes. I think this color is called Super Bronze. After a fresh coat of sealant, I can layer some pencils and paints on top of the shimmer. I was going for a kiwi pattern on her eyes. It's very subtle because I did it in brown instead of green, but I think you can see the lines of the kiwi fruit and the dark brown seeds done with brown acrylic paint. Then I shaded the eyes with black pan pastel before adding the final touches with catch lights. I added some to her waterline as well. I felt like the eyes were big enough this time to accommodate that. Then after sealing her, I add Tamiya Gloss Glaze to her lips and eyes as well. First, I thought about only glossing the waterline, but I wanted the shimmer in her eyes to pop more, so I just did the whole eye. I really like how glossed eyes look. On to her hair! I only had a small amount of this green yarn, but it was the perfect color, so I really wanted to use it. I thought I could add some dark brown into the mix as well. I turned the yarn into doll hair by first cutting it into smaller pieces and tying them around barbecue sticks. Then I brush the yarn until it becomes all fluffy. 
Speaking of fluffy, here is my cat, Monny. I love how he takes up all of my working space. <laughs> he literally needs to be the center of attention all the time. To get the hair to lay more flat, I use my straightener on it. The brown yarn is not 100% acrylic, so it still is a bit curly, but I don't mind. I experimented with giving her darker roots with some ink, which was not smart of me because I had so little of the green yarn, but in the end I did manage to find a way that worked. To turn the loose yarn into something more manageable, I make wefts out of it using PVA glue and a plastic Ziploc bag. The most satisfying part is when you get to peel them off of the plastic. I trim the excess off of the wefts with my scissors. This weft was not one of the successful ones. I recommend gluing the weft first before painting on the ink for the roots, like you see me do here. You have way more control and the wet glue doesn't make the ink reactivate and seep everywhere. Now that I have my wefts, I can start mapping out her hairstyle on her scalp. The lines look really chaotic, but they do help to know where to place the wefts and keep everything relatively even in the end. I start with my brown wefts at the nape of the neck. I want her to have a short hairstyle with bangs and space buns. I have done space buns many times before, so I thought making the hairstyle short in the back would be something different. I use the ugly green wefts on the first layer of her bangs. This way you can't really see them much. I continue with the green around the head. All these hairs are going to be laying flat. Next, let's make the base for the space buns. It's just three small wefts glued to the center of where I want the buns to be in the end. To make the part line, I take the rest of my wefts and press a crease into them using a flat metal hair clip and my straightener. Then I glue these parting wefts around the future space buns area and the middle part starting from the bangs and ending at the crown of the head. Now she definitely looks like an anime character with this crazy hair. To secure the loose hairs into space buns, I use some wire. I have found that this is a much more secure way than elastic bands, because they have a tendency to brittle and snap over time. I used some extra green fluff to make the buns as full as I wanted. Then it's haircut time! I chop off first her bangs and then the rest of the hair. I'm going for a short, cute bob with feathery ends. Just like the bangs are not blunt but a bit softer. I decided to curl the ends for maximum cuteness. To secure everything in place, I used a liberal amount of hairspray. For that, freeze fix, ultimate hold. I painted her nails and gave her some bracelets made out of beads before moving on to her outfit. For her outfit, I will be using these socks and some leftover fabric from my boyfriend's pant legs. I made a paper version of the pleated skirt I wanted to make. I traced it onto my fabric and made sure to mark the pleats carefully. I snipped the bottom hem to make the pleats lay flatter in the end. I then glued down the hem and secured the pleats with glue as well. 
They will be sewn in place too, but to make it a bit easier to manage, I will glue them down first. To prevent the skirt from rising up, I sew a piece of lace so that it catches the doll's crotch and keeps the skirt in place. Plus, it looks like underwear. I cut out the waistband using the pattern I created by tracing the paper mock-up of the skirt. I will then sew it to the skirt, fold the top edge down and under and secure that with some tiny stitches. I didn't try and sandwich the whole thing into the waistband because it was getting very bulky already. I added a snap closure at the back. I made some socks out of this stretchy lycra material earlier, but it didn't make sense to include the footage until now. I also used the same fabric for a small white top. It was super simple, just a rectangular piece with two slits cut into it for armholes. I was also too lazy to add any closures for the top because it didn't really need one and you would hardly see it in the end. I wanted her to wear a cozy sweater with some embroidery on it. So that's why I chose the socks in the first place. I cut off the parts of the sock that I can't use, like the top edge, toe and heel area. Basically, we want a large flat piece. I didn't bother to make a pattern for the sweater because I wanted it to be oversized, so I roughly measured things against the doll before eyeballing it. I cut two smaller pieces for the sleeves and then fold the rest of the fabric and cut out a torso piece with some armholes and a neckline. I also cut the piece in half at the back so that I can add a zipper later. Now, this is a rare thing on my channel, we are going to be sewing this using my sewing machine. I don't often use it because it's old and clunky and it likes to eat small pieces of fabric. But because this is a super stretchy knit fabric and the raw edges need to be secured somehow, I thought I would give it a go. I did have to use the tissue paper trick to get the small pieces through the machine, and still it was a struggle. In the beginning you saw me set the machine to a specific stitch. That's to help keep the seams stretchy like the fabric is. It's a pretty simple sweater, so I start with the cuffs at the sleeves. Then I set the sleeves at the shoulder. Then I finish off the neckline and close the side seams and so shut the sleeves all on one go, before adding the final pieces at the bottom. To secure the zipper, I use a tight zigzag stitch. To decorate it, I cut a small heart from white fabric, and I also add a piece of interfacing to make sure the sweater doesn't stretch out while I do the embroidery around the heart. The embroidery was obviously inspired by the look of the kiwi fruit when it's cut in half. Now that the outfit was done, I felt like it needed some accessorizing. So I added this sparkly chain to her skirt. It has some cute hearts and rhinestones for that extra sparkle. I feel like the chain was a good start, so let's make some more accessories for her. I wanted her to have a fruit themed bag, but I felt like a shoulder bag would be too much of an obvious choice. So I came up with this super cute design for a backpack. I can't wait for you guys to see this bag, it's so cute. I 3D sculpted some very simple shapes to act as the base of the backpack. This disc looking thing with a small lip on it gets sanded and primed for painting with white gesso. I turned the plain looking disc into a kiwi slice with some green, white and brown paint. Adding the seeds made the slice really look like a kiwi.
I then gloss the piece for that wet looking shine. The zipper is slightly too wide for the bag after all, so I trim it to size and seal the edges with heat. I then glue the zipper onto the fruit slice. That's what the lip is for. If you want, I can make these files available at Thingiverse. Just leave me a comment down below if you would like that. Now that you can see the actual bag portion of the backpack, I hope you can understand better how it's coming together. To make the bag look more like an actual kiwi, I will be covering the outside with this faux suede material. It's honestly perfect for a kiwi bag. I glue on the fabric and trim off the excess. I had to make a slit in the fabric to make it fit the round shape better. I then join the two sides with glue. A small sliver of fabric finishes off the edge real nice. I create some straps from the same brown fabric by just folding it and gluing it down. I also added a cute handle to the top and decorated it with a keychain. The last thing we still have to do is the shoes. I wanted her to wear very chunky sneakers, Harajuku style, so kawaii. To create my sneakers, I first modified Enchantarium's free shoe base file that they created for their smart doll cyborg Coco. I had to make the sole wider and a lot smaller to fit my cave club doll's feet, but it works surprisingly well. I printed the pieces with our filament printer using the same fluorescent yellow filament that I did for the bag. I remove the supports from the print before I move on creating the fabric pieces of the shoe. Enchantarium does provide patterns for the rest of the shoe as well, but I decided to create my own because my shoe is so much smaller than theirs. I use plastic wrap and tape to be able to draw on the design. I then transfer my markings to paper. The cross-hatched areas are going to have two layers of fabric, while the connecting tabs just have one. These are all the pieces needed for the shoes. I will be using two different fabrics to get a two-toned look. After all the brown pieces were assembled, I could do the yellow ones. To create that sneaker-like look, I sandwiched some felt in between two layers of the fabric to get them to the right thickness. I cut slits into all of the connecting tabs, and then start the assembly with the shoe's tongue. It gets glued down to the toe cap piece. I then add some glue to the sole and press in the toe cap's side piece. I then glue in the puffy back heel piece. Then it's the roof of the toe cap together with the tongue already glued in. I then do the side pieces and after that we can lace the shoes with some white twine and two needles at both ends. The print job was not as smooth as I would have liked, so I applied some drywall compound and sanded the bottoms for a nicer finish. I also off-camera detailed the soles a bit with paint and added a small label at the back of the shoe. 
in true Harajuku spirit, I needed to add some hair decorations. I went with two fabric ribbons and some chunky pieces of glitter glued on to look like hairpins. And with that, she is done. She turned out super kawaii and I loved working with the Cave Club doll body. It has nice articulation and at the same time it's super small and cute. I would love to work with other ones in the future. I love the whole outfit I created for her. I think the sweater is really cute even though it could be more neat and tidy. I love the shoes and it was fun creating a flat soled shoe for once and not a high heel. But hands down my favorite part of the outfit is the backpack. I love it so much. I'm legit thinking of making like a coin purse for myself. It's so so cute and kawaii. Leave a comment down below what is your favorite part about her. Don't forget to see all the other amazing artists in this collab. I will have links in my description box to all of their channels so you can find them real easy. And before you go, I think it might be fun to try and guess what fruits the dolls were inspired by before you go and see all the videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't yet done that, like this video and leave a comment. I would love to know what you think of my kawaii kiwi girl. Until next time, bye!